Okay, good morning traders and welcome to the Bookmap uh, Pro Trader webinar series today for December 11th. We have Enrico Stucchi. Uh, he uh, is both stocks and futures trader uh, and uh, he's got a really uh, excellent performance here. He is in Italy and there um, he was he wanted to of course uh, show live market examples. Uh, unfortunately, he won't due to some of the uh, uh, COVID uh, and impact on the connections over there. So he's going to be showing the static uh, presentation. But you guys, uh, really, th this there's a lot of information here. It is excellent. Uh, I can't wait to see what uh, he's going over. He's going to be looking at uh, uh, larger players, uh, commitment of traders, uh, and um, uh, really uh, go into depth here uh, and then show examples of uh, of that using Bookmap. Okay, so it should be uh, excellent. Uh, and not only uh, should it be excellent for today, uh, there's so much material that Enrico has put together that we're going to include this uh, a part two on Tuesday. Okay, so uh, that's going to be the plan here. Uh, this is basically part one. All right, so um, uh, looking forward to both parts here. Uh, quite a bit. Let me go through some uh, risk disclosures uh, and a bit of news, and then uh, we'll get started right away with uh, with Enrico. Okay, the gen general disclosure: all Bookmap Limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only, and should be con should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, a little bit about Enrico. Um, he started his, uh, his career uh, as a part-time trader in 2002. Uh, working for a large telco company. In 2009, he decided to leave his job and become a professional trader. Uh, that's uh, quite, a, quite a risk to take. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, he's been quite successful with it. He uses a quantitative approach to determine uh, specific edges in the market. Currently, he's managing proprietary trading firm with diverse diversified strategic approach, uh, automated trading systems, and quantitative investing. Uh, Enrico combines his quantitative methods uh, together with order flow and liquidity analysis from Bookmap to support his trading decisions. Uh, he is classified as a larger trader by the CFTC. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in reaching out to Enrico, uh, you've got his email here, his Facebook page, and there's some special offers uh, from Book, uh, Bookmap from Enrico. Uh, they're longer term uh, options or offers, uh, so um, I'll put this link into the chat for you, uh, all of this information here, so you can reach out to Enrico. Uh, and uh, one more element here or item is that the um, uh, there is a special on Bookmap uh, with a coupon code. I put it into the chat there for you. Um, it's uh, basically good through Sunday. It's 50% off for the first month of Global or Global Plus. Okay. And, it's only monthly, um, and uh, you use this coupon code here. Okay, now we're going to offer it again on Wednesday. The reason that we uh, I'm offering it to you now is perhaps uh, you're uh, interested in Bookmap right now, and I can extend that to you now with this coupon code. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's get started. I'll uh, uh, give the presentation here to Enrico, and we'll take it away. Okay. Just a, a quick audio and video test. Do you, uh, can you hear me? Do you copy? Yep, you sound great. Um, a a okay. little bit uh, uh, in, uh, I guess, uh, a, a distant uh, using, the, I guess, computer microphone. Um, yeah, the, unfortunately, yes. Okay, no no problem. We can hear you just fine. Uh, and uh, the desktop looks great. We, we, we're okay. looking at the let's which get started. Can uh, you see now? Which, which screen? Uh, what, do you, what do you see? The... Yeah, the let's get started uh, connecting to GoToWebinar. Has a green on the top there. Okay, but I cannot understand which screen can you can 
you you see now you, yeah you, you I, see your mouse. I see your mouse moving a, a mouse moving okay yes. but i want to share another screen so uh so do, do you see um google uh, chrome or just yes. uh, just the mouse i i'm i'm looking at google chrome um how can i change my screen oh, okay me uh let's see here okay okay maybe maybe on uh, there you now? go now i see uh enrico stucchi uh in your uh book map presentation okay do you see the um the presentation mode or the structure mode i see the presentation mode so full screen correct wonderful uh so good and sorry for for this uh, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon here in Europe. Good afternoon to our Italian friends. And um, this is basic the summary of what we are going to talk about today. But before starting, I would like to apologize for my uh, broken English. That's my first webinar in English. I know that can be very boring and even irritating to listen to someone who doesn't master the language who devastates and destroy grammar uh, pronunciation and you has got a very narrow vocabulary like me but please uh, forgive me be patient because i hope that the, the trading skill and the quality of the topic in itself wouldn't be no worse than my linguistic uh, anyway bruce uh, speaks a perfect italian so he can help me uh, interacting with me and supporting my language deficiency if necessary okay today i would like to deal with two macro topics uh, one the first one is just a little bit more theoretical and the second one this one uh, can you see my my mouse arrow sir uh, uh, yes okay. yes okay and the second one is uh, more practical I know that many of you would want to go to move directly to the practical one. Maybe they are hoping that I can bring the Holy Grail, but that's not the case. And uh, I think the most of the value is in the first topic, the, the, the theoretical one, because I never heard anyone talk about talk about this topic in trading education. So it could be uh, new, maybe. Uh, so we have a lot on in our plate today, so let's start. Um, the first topic is uh, that I would like to talk about is uh, re regarding strong hands, institutional traders, smart money, big money. Uh, and I try to, to show you who are those guys, what they need, uh, how they act in the market. And the second part, uh, I'd like to um, to show the second part. Uh, maybe we are doing uh, next Tuesday. I would like to show how to trade Nasdaq future looking on the charts and liquidity levels of Apple and Microsoft stocks, because in my humble opinion, they are uh, much cleaner, sharp, and more readable than uh, that on NQ future. Okay. Uh, for the second uh, webinar, I take for granted that you already know how Bookmap works. So the enormous edge and insight that you can extract using Bookmap uh, instead of a common trading platform. If not, I recommend you to take a look at the huge and uh, high quality um, amount of material that is available in the bookmap channel in English um, that Bruce has prepared in, 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 in those years. In Italian, we there is available my, the recording of my webinar uh, made on February 25th this year, and also uh, some videos in my YouTube channel that is called Trading con le palle. So if you are Italian, uh, make a, a google research, a google search in youtube 
uh, you know, trading called value literally means trading with the balls. That can sounds just a little bit rude. Excuse me for that. Um, okay, Ma, let's start with the, the first topic right away. And uh, let me use this metaphor. Um, that's a very, very famous uh, sentence of Lincoln. Uh, to understand why it's so important to spend time uh, learning the contest. So, which player are on the battlefield before starting playing, uh, pressing, sorry, a buy or sell button, okay? Uh, because um, usually we do trade, we do over trade, uh, but we don't understand who are the people we are fighting against, who are our enemies, who can be our allies in that battlefield. Now remember that uh, the market is not a playground, it's a battleground. If you want to survive, it's better to learn this before the battle starts. Okay. Um, all traders uh, know the, the, the strong hands, institutional traders, smart money, big money, but uh, no one, uh, not, not everyone has understood who this sub, uh, the subject really are. So many believe that this, these um, people are sharks that are feeding on the losses of retail traders. And so they spend uh, their day hunting for our stop losses. Um, but it's not really true because the, the strong hands don't play the trading game against retail trader. Because if you compare, uh, you can, Im can imagine that the big player are like a whale or a whale shark. They can feed on small uh, krill and plankton, okay? But that's not true because they are starving if you do that because uh, retail traders are irrelevant. So they do not provide enough liquidity for the transaction of institutional operators. So they must necessarily trade with each other. Uh, how can I prove it? Can I prove it, sorry? Um, just looking at CFTC commitment of traders. So the cut report, okay? What's the cut report? Maybe um, most of you um, know very well what it is, but uh, at the end of every Tuesday trading session, if you own a position larger than a specific threshold, this threshold is called reporting level, you should report to CFTC. Okay, this task, this task is accomplished directly by the brokers or the intermediary, but uh, if you have, uh, for the first time, a position larger than the reporting level, you have you are considered as a reportable trader, and you must fill, fill the form 40 of the CFTC in order to be classified by CFTC in different categories. This happens only the first time that you um, cross above the, the reporting level, and at every change in your structure, okay? Uh, in Form 40, you have to describe who you are, with your structure, and that should explain the reason why you own the disposition. And the information that you provide with Form 40, CFTC, classify you, classify traders in different categories. Okay, this is the kind email that you receive when you do that. Um, and uh, this is the, the older version of the cut report. This is called the legacy version, which uh, was mainly used for commodity futures because um, cut report has started many years ago uh, for reporting position of commodity. Um, and here in this legacy report, there are just two categories. One is commercials and the other is non-commercials. Commercials are people involved in physically touching the, the commodity, while non-commercials are also called large speculators, okay? Uh, 
For difference, you can uh, calculate um, non-reportable, also called small speculators position, because small speculators are calculated um, from total position minus commercial minus large speculators. Okay. Uh, commercial, I'll, I said, as people involved in commodity, so they may be a producer, like farmer, for instance, for corn or coffee, uh, dealers, uh, processors. I mean, for processors, I imagine the cracking of, uh, of oil or uh, crushing of soybeans or extracting soybean meal or soybean oil. And uh, um, end users are, um, for instance, uh, for coffee, it could be Starbucks or Nestlé. Okay, so people, the, the, the farm that use and that sell that, those commodity. Uh, they use future generally in order to cover the commercial risk arising from uh, commercial deals. Okay. Um, the legacy version remains uh, today the most widely used version of COT report to date, but it's not suitable for use, for instance, in financial derivatives such as future or options in, uh, um, in on index bonds, currencies, and uh, because the term speculator for this kind of future is quite obvious, but the commercial is not. Uh, so they, um, um, CFTC has created a reclassified commodity traders in uh, and uh, financial traders in TFF report. So the TFF has four different categories that you can find here. So dealer, intermediary, asset manager, institutional leverage funds, and auto reportable for difference. Uh, and also for uh, commodities, they have reclassified because there were some borderline situations. So they uh, created different uh, um, categories. So producer, merchant, processor, and users, that's quite clear. Swap dealers is just a bit a li little bit tricky. Uh, manage money and auto reportables. I don't want to go uh, deep inside the explanation of what um, cut report is, but you can find the definition here. This is the definition for uh, commodities. So the disaggregated commitments of traders. So producer, merchant, processor, user is quite evident. Swap dealer, like I was I said, is just a little bit tricky. Um, and money manager and auto report. So you can go deep inside to this uh, the, the explanatory note that you can find um, in uh, CFTC uh, website. I will put the link in the description if you want. Okay, for uh, trader in financial future, we have four categories and uh, asset manager and institutional is quite clear, leverage funds, it's quite clear because they are uh, hedge funds, as uh, CTA means commodity trading and advisors, CPO, commodity uh, pool operators, and asset managers, it's quite obvious. But the first one is the most difficult to understand because they, these participants are described as the sell side, but they do not may, uh, predominantly sell future. They sell various financial assets to clients. So um, they have to uh, edge uh, their, their position against clients and against market. And they are building structured products using uh, vanilla derivatives. So vanilla derivatives, for instance, are future and options. And with those vanilla derivatives, you can build more structured products that you can sell to other player in the market, okay? You, mainly large player in the market because the, usually retail traders don't buy, don't use um, structured products. But um, for instance, the swap or other derivatives can be used by those guys, okay? Uh, let's see 
what uh, what you can see in the code report this is how is published directly on the CFTC website uh, website this is the code report in so, trader and financial future for ES ES e mini uh, future okay what, what you can find here the position of long so the dealer intermediary are long for 218,000 uh, contracts, short for 519,000 contracts, and so on. Asset manager, long, short. Uh, this is also spreading position because you can spread, for instance, have long and short or calendar spread or such kind of spread trading. Uh, leverage funds and order reportable. For difference, so the total position in the market minus this, 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 and you can uh, calculate non-reportable position. Okay, that number is very important. Okay, uh, so for instance, non-reportable positions are 10.8 percent long. So the, the total long, if you make 100, the total long position only 10 percent is owned by non-reportable and 12% short position of the total short position are owned by non-reportable, okay? And you can see also a very interesting number, the number of traders represented in each category. You don't have this number for non-reportable. If you are not reportable, you don't have to report, so they don't know how many traders in this category, okay? But in those category, you can find the number. So you can see that the total number of traders in this in the, on those category are 542. So 542 traders accounts for 88, 90% of the total open interest in the market. And the rest is for no reportable. Okay, that's a really important number. Uh, so this is the picture, the picture uh, November 17, uh, and this is the movie. So you can uh, obtain a chart with the um, evolution of the net position in legacy report or in TFF of different categories. For instance, large task speculators, more speculator and commercial. As I said, commercial for e mini it's a definition that doesn't make sense. So you have to use TFF, so dealer intermediary, asset manager, leverage funds, and other reportable. Like I can, I don't know if you can see those number, but this is the evolution. So this is the whole movie. Okay. Uh, um, the movie is related to uh, Martin Tuesday and the, the, the um, quarter report is uh, issued uh, uh, on Friday at the end of the Friday session. Okay, so maybe just a little bit old, but useful, believe me. Okay, um, as we saw in the, the previous um, report, this one, remember those number, no reportable accounts for 10, 11, 12 percent of the total position, um, but no reportable traders are not retail traders. Why? Because you have to consider the reporting level. So if you own, for instance, 999 ES contract, you are a non-reportable. How can I say that if I have 500, even 100, 900, 999 contracts, of yes, in my pocket, I'm a retail trader. I'm still a large player. So I cannot say exactly how, ma how many retail traders are in the market for yes, but for sure is a subset of this number. Okay. Okay. Um, this link, please write it down because it's very hidden in the uh, CFTC uh, website, it's not uh, um, 
so easy to find out. So uh, if you want to know for every future, which are the, um, the reporting level, use this, this link. Okay, but here I, I uh, can show you the reporting level for uh, different future, for the com most common future. For instance, yes, 1000 contract. Okay. And you, 2000, YM, mini Dow Jones, 200, and to Y, 200, and so on. Okay. Very big reporting threshold for um, bonds, such as T notes or T bond. Okay. So then ZV, 2000, 1500. Those are reporting level for energy future. So if, for instance, you uh, own 100 contract of CL, you are not reportable, but you are not a retail trader, in my opinion. Natural gas, 200, uh, eating oil or diesel, 150, and gasoline, 150. Those for metals, 200 for gold, 150 for copper, 150 for silver and so on. Grains, corn with soybeans, soybean meal, soybean oil. Those are the figures. And the soft commodities, so from coffee, the smallest one, 50 contracts of coffee. Coffee is a very heavy contract, or 50 for iron juice. 100, 100, and 500 for sugar. Okay. Those are reporting level for livestock, lean oaks, live cattle, feeder cattle, 100, 150. Okay. And those for currency future. Uh, so, um, EURFX 400 and 400 for the, for the the main uh, future, except for New Zealand and dollar index or Bitcoin. Bitcoin is very, very little. Bitcoin is a very heavy contract also. The CME, because the CFE contract has disappeared. Okay, uh, so now we can just have a, a look of uh, to some other uh, code report in order to understand this numbers, this figure, for instance, this is natural gas and G. And so you can see that no reportable position are from three to 5% of the total market. But the reporting level is 200. This is crude oil from 2.9 to 4.1% reporting level 350. This is gold, this is higher, 3.8, 11.5, reporting level is 200. Okay, now in the report you can find another number that's here, that the percent of open interest held by the largest trader, the largest four trader, okay? So this is Imini, for instance, for Imini, you can see that the largest four play, play players accounts for an average of uh, from 15 to 20 uh, percent of the ES market. So just four trader account for a quarter of the market. That's a very important figure to remember. Uh, I saw yesterday that Scott Polsini was trading 10% of the US market, so a very huge number, impressive. Uh, that's URFX, so in, that's URFX, you can see that the largest four player accounts from about 20 to even 60% of the market. That's NQ, okay, the average is 20, 40. So that's the concentration of the, the, the player in the market. That's a very important number. That's crude oil. Crude oil, 20, 35, okay. The average, let me say 20, 
20% of the market for largest player. Okay, um, I would like to show you uh, another concept that's um, usually misunderstood in my humble opinion. So at the distribution or accumulation, because in my opinion, distribution or accumulation is a, a relative concept and not an absolute concept. Because if you uh, um, do a trade, someone needs to buy and someone else needs to sell. So uh, it makes sense that if one trader is accumulating a position, another one is distributing them. So uh, many traders believe that larger traders distribute their position to retail traders. But this belief is completely false. And you can see here, okay? This is soybeans, for instance. So small speculators, small speculators are those with less than 150 contracts, account for only for 6% of the market. So here, here we can see that large speculators are increasing their positions. So they are accumulated net position, okay? There are accumulated contracts on. Uh, soybeans while commercial are distributing those positions and no reportable are irrelevant. Okay, so uh, distribution and accumulation, it's a false concept in my opinion because there is only one who is distributing, one who is accumulating, and those players are big. So, no retail trader cannot accumulate the position that are distributed by large player. So that, that's really important. It, it, now you can see also that if you see the cut report that net position are increasing while the price is increasing, you can easily understand that large speculator are earning and making money because the price is rising and they are accumulating the position while commercial are losing money. That's not really true because they are hedging their position. Maybe they are also earning money because the price is rising. If I if I am a, a producer or I have to sell soybeans, I'm very happy if the price is rising. So the price is rising. I'm maybe losing money in my future hedging position, but I am earning money from my physical commodity that I'm selling that I am selling. So uh, remember that. So they need that uh, different players in the market are different. So the speculators need to earn money following the price, but the co a commercial doesn't because they can earn money even if uh, are at the wrong side of the future. Okay, because they are losing money here, but they are making money on the other side, the physical side. Okay, uh, now let's see a very important question. Do strong hands make money every day? That is a legitimate question that um, may arise. Okay, maybe, uh, but you know that retail traders usually lose money, okay, in statistics are clear, 75% during a quarter, 90% over one year, and 99% to the average, more or less, over a three-year period. So we don't know if large players are making money. Um, maybe you have heard the story of um, the virtual financial. Virtual Financial is a large HFT, one of the first HFT that arrived in the market, and let me say 10, 12 years ago, it can remember. So in the first five years of activity, they told they had just one losing day. So they did really better than me. Uh, so, now the competition is stronger and so HFT uh, are not so profitable than before. But anyway, 
you can see that strong hands usually earn money. Okay, you, you can see here in those, in those figure because so sometimes they lose money. For instance, here they are losing money on interest rates, future or interest rate derivatives here, here in credit derivatives, but usually they are earning money on commodity, credit, equity, forex, and so on. Okay. This is the um, uh, only official um, figure that I found out um, in, you can find in the OCC uh, publication, it's a government, um, government um, publication, it's uh, quite important. Now you can see that, for instance, in derivatives markets, four banks, dominate the derivative markets because they are really relevant, okay? All other banks, top four. Who was this guy? JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Citibank, and Bank of America, and so on, but Fargo, HSBC, okay? Here we can find official statement of Morgan Stanley, the second quarter in 2020. Earning results, sales and trading net revenues up 68%. Okay. They earn money. Air Forbes, trading revenue surge at Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan. So the big player usually earn money. And central banks. Don't forget that you have to fight against central banks. That's Bank of Japan, for instance, but also Bank of Swiss, uh, Swiss Bank or F, um, Fed or even um, ECB are buying stocks and ETF, for instance. So they are a really large player in this market. Okay. So the famous scientists don't fight the Fed. Okay. Uh, what conclusion we can draw from figures that we have seen? And the first conclusion that is that retail traders are insignificant in future market. So in my opinion, it's better to try to understand how big players act in the market and try to anticipate and follow the smartest guy in the market. Uh, one other suggestion is you don't have to think like you usually do. Don't think as a retail trader. Don't put your stop loss just under one tick after after the low or one tick um, bill, um, on top on the high, because that's kind of uh, trading doesn't work. The majority of retail traders do that and they lose money. So do not act as a retail trader. Remember that different player in the market equals different needs. Someone is speculating, someone is edging, and they have different time horizon. We, horizon, we can see this in a while. So, who are the different players in the market arena? From the biggest sovereign funds, private pension funds, mutual funds, passive funds such as ATF, ATN, ATC, endowments, this this doesn't exist in Italy, that our university endowments um, doesn't exist uh, but in the US, uh, the EV League University are very, very important. They manage a huge amount of money. Hedge funds, uh, CTA, commodity trading advisors, commodity pool operators, prop trading desk, very important. Merchant bank, HFT, market makers. Okay, we'll see what a market maker do in the market 
And uh, dealer intermediaries, as classified by CFTC, so people who is building structural derivatives products for over-the-counter or for managed saving products, or can they can use future also an option to edge the risk arising from the their position against uh, market or clients? Okay. Sorry, just a bit, a little bit of water. Okay, uh, so my suggestion is trying to be like a remora. What is a remora? It's a small fish that lives in symbiotic, um, in symbiosis with a shark. The remora eats shark uh, scraps of prey dropped by the shark, and this it's protected from predators. Um, and it benefits for a free transportation through the ocean. You cannot move the market, so you have to follow people who is moving the market. Okay, that's the sense of this sentence. So my suggestion is not try to think like big players do. Uh, usually they call retail traders as dump money and smart money for big traders okay remember that big traders need to buy or sell relevant position you we usually buy or sell just one lot one contract two contracts but they have to buy or sell hundreds on thousand contracts in a day or even in an hour so they cannot act as we do and you have to understand that because we can follow the uh, flow of those guys that are moving relevant position they cannot accumulate and distributing those position in a single trade so they need minutes hours or even day for buy and sell in the position that they want to buy or sell Usually, they try to hide their movement using what? Algorithms and strategies. For instance, iceberg orders, you know, they, they, want, they don't want to be um, in the book, they want to stay in the book, they want to play hidden, which is in the iceberg orders. But if you have trained eyes and you, uh, if you have the right tool, like bookmap, for instance, you can see because with bookmap you can see icebergs. That's really important. And remember that big player prefer to buy and sell in liquid and slow markets because they prefer to trade where trades are facilitated. So where in balanced market. What is a balanced market? See what auction market theory is. If you don't know what action, auction market theory is, use Google. Very important. I really like auction market theory. One of my favorite um, theory about market mechanic. They play during cash sessions and they play at liquid levels that's very important why so important to have a tool like bookmap okay because you see liquid levels the most the more liquid levels and they trade in the most liquid hours so during the the, the session the the cash session the most liquid hours are open close and set remember that Okay, that's the essential of auction market theory. You have balanced market where the, um, the, the price spend a lot of time so they can accumulate and distributing because here they are accumulating and distributing a large amount of volumes. This is the low volume node, these are high volume node. In the low volume node, the market is imbalanced. Okay? And the price usually moves very, very quick in imbalanced market. They don't want to spend a lot of time in imbalanced market. 
so volume are little because the time that you spend in imbalance market is limited. Okay. Now I don't know how many time you, we have got. Uh, okay, let's skip this. For instance, a pension fund needs to buy 10,000 years future. Uh, the market value is of approximately $1.7 billion for 10,000 future. And ask to carry out this transaction to JPM or other broker at the best possible price before 12 a.m. Okay, remember that yes, average volume during last 30 days has been one um, one million six hundred uh, contracts. So 10,000 contracts, just 0.62 percent of the total daily volume. Okay, remember that average BBO best bid offer levels in US during a regular time hours is 120 contracts per side. So if you buy just with just one trade, 10,000 contract uh, with a buy and sell market, you, you can sweep 30 or 40 levels, okay? Remember that the 300 biggest pension fund have approximately 20 trillions of asset under management. So a 10,000 contract that can be considered as a huge amount of money is just 0.08% of the total market value. So it's peanuts, okay? But this is, for instance, the, the, the impact on the market with a single trade 10,000 contracts. Here we can see this is cumulative order book. Cumulative order book is the order book that you have to um, cumulate every single level. So, okay, you can see that if you want to buy or sell 10,000 counter, we'll sweep about 30 or 40 levels in the book. Okay, here we cannot, you cannot see iceberg orders because in the current order book, you don't see iceberg order, but anyway, you can quite evident that you cannot put a 10,000 market order or even to put a buy limit order of 10,000 contract here. Okay, you cannot buy a 3,600 3, uh, uh, with a limit order of 10,000 contracts. It's, it's a huge amount of money, so you have to, to distribute this. Uh, order in different trades. So that's why algos exist. Remember that the majority of, of algorithms active in the market are execution. So they, they're called execution alpha or max execution. So those algo are not in charge of the decision if buy or sell or how many contracts to buy and sell or when. They are not the classic trading system that we as retail traders uh, are using. I'm, I'm using trading system for deciding uh, if buy or sell, but those algos are not my trading system, my stupid trading system, and something more sophisticated. Those algos are not HFT. So they are programmed to buy and sell a predefined number of contracts in a predefined time window at the best possible average price. So the simplest execution alpha algo are called view up. So volume weighted average price. That's the same name of the indicator that you can find the platform. But this is an algo, not the indicator. Or another is T. You um, W up so time weighted average price or POV percent on volume. Uh, what they do? They, these algo are programmed in order to to buy a defined amount of money in a def, in a defined time window. They are trying to buy, for instance, at a price lower than the view up of 
this time specific time window. For instance, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., I have to buy 10,000 contract. If I am buying below the view up, my algo is, is effective. If I am buying above, my algo is, is not effective. Um, those algo are also available in, with some brokers such as uh, Interactive Broker and other premium brokers. If you go deep inside of this topic, I suggest those links. It would be very interesting if you want to, to understand what an execution alpha algo is and how they act. For instance, here, we have a uh, best execution alpha. They are provided by Natixis. Natixis is a, a French uh, farm. And they provide those algo to their customers. So if you want, you want, participate, target close, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, maybe you cannot read here, but we can find the strategy objective, how they are used, the main parameters, typical order example, a main behavior. Uh, you can uh, go deep here if you if you want to download this document. Okay, very very interesting in my opinion. Okay, uh, we are finishing. So different needs. Remember that big player have different needs because some of them are speculating, but also arbitrage. Uh, because re remember, for instance, that the main backbone, internet backbone, then has been built in the United States, for, um, connecting Chicago to New Jersey, has been uh, built for this, for the arbitrage between uh, S&P 500 and the basket of 500 uh, shares um, stocks in New York, New York Stock Exchange. Okay, they can hedge because um, a lot of player must hedge the variability of price for commercial transactions, such for, for instance, for commodities. Producer, dealers, and user use future for that. Or maybe you can add a stock portfolio with future and option. So you are long for with a stock portfolio and you can hedge the, the, this position uh, short in future in, um, in um, when the market is moving against. Or you can edge a option position. Okay, for instance, you are an option seller and if you are an option seller, you have got a big risk. So you have to hedge the position if the price go against you. Another possibility is to be a spread trader. So a calendar spread, for instance. So I buy, for instance, natural gas uh, January and I'm selling natural gas February, or long yes, short Nasdaq, long BTP, uh, the Italian 10 years bond, and short uh, boom, the German one, or long ZN. Uh, against ZF, so five um, five years US against ten years, or market making. So some player are just there for market making, so for providing liquidity, they are paid for providing liquidity, and also uh, block traders, block trader and BTIC basis trade at index close. So they are liquidity provider for buy and sell. The market is closed. You can find here at CME the explanation of that. And they may have a different time horizon. For instance, an HFT has a very, very short time horizon. A market maker also, a scalper also, a very, very short time frame, time horizon. Day trader to close the position before the close of the session. While, for instance, hedge funds, CPA, CPO, medium time horizon, asset manager or pension fund are long time horizon. So when they come into the market, they have different time horizons. So they have different needs. So they have different way to trade than retail. Remember, if, if I'm hitting, for instance, the buy 
key, the by if I'm pressing the by key on the on my platform, maybe I want to open a long position or because I have an upside view of the market, but not necessarily. Maybe I can cover a short position because I'm I'm losing money, so I'm taking my stop loss or I'm taking my take profit. Or maybe I had just a portfolio. Maybe I'm hedging as a, 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 a position in a, a sell position uh, in, in options, or maybe I do spread trading or arbitrage. Okay, uh, do we have just one other minute for uh, market makers, Bruce? Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. <clears throat> just two, two words about market makers because market makers uh, have an impact on our trades. Market making is an activity uh, where um, a trader, trader, a big institution, obviously, simultaneously provides liquidity to both buyer and seller in a potential market. Okay, they earn money from spread because they put limit orders, so they can buy at the best bid and sell at the best offer, and they are earning this difference, and they earn it from rebates and from exchange fee. Um, in some market, there are official market makers, also called specialists, and they are subject to some rules. They have to have a max maximum spread, minimum size, minimum time in market. They have to be in both sides of the market, so they have to stay in ask or err in bid. Those rules are established by the exchange. But there are also unofficial market makers that could be present everywhere. Market makers love sideways. They prefer to stay in balanced market because if the market moves quickly, they can lose money. So the risk increases in volatile and imbalanced market. So can they use they can disappear from the market when the market is in imbalance? So what happens if they disappear the volatility become more and more volatile the volatility increases because they are disappearing so the book is less liquid so that's really important to understand when they disappear so to understand when the uh, bid and offer uh, are decreasing they the, mm, the size uh, is pulled by the book, uh, so very very important to understand because the market can be can, can become can became becomes excuse me uh, very very quick when they disappear. For instance, when usually they disappear, stop runs occur. We'll see stop runs in the next webinar with some examples. Usually in crypto exchange you pay if you are a market taker so you if you hit the bid or if you lift the offer while you are paid for market making making so if you stay in the book you are paid if you are hit by an aggressor uh, this is extracted from the cme CM, um, education a website so market makers are those guys are British short term oriented and they earn from spread while market takers usually are traders, investors, uh, and so on. Um, just uh, we can see here how much they are paid. Okay, this is for instance the um, rewarding program of CME uh, for being a market maker in T bond. Mm -hmm. So you have to stay 60% in the market. You have to provide there are different categories, 10, 20, 30, or 40 um, contracts per side. Okay, and you obtain those waiver and discount or incentives. Okay. So you can understand how market maker um, act in the market. Okay. Um, I finished the second part is the more practical one, how to trade NASDAQ looking at Apple and Microsoft, but there is not time enough. So if some question, if you have some question, I'm here 
to answer. Uh, otherwise, we can answer in <clears throat> in the um, by email or the ne next webinar or in the comments in YouTube. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you, Enrico. That was just uh, excellent uh, and uh, really um, one of the the best presentations I've seen on giving um, uh, details on and all consolidated here in one presentation of, of the market players and really what's going on uh, within these markets. Uh, this is really uh, uh, invaluable uh, for uh, for us as traders to, to understand this uh, 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 distinction here and, and you've, you've put it all together for us. So, so thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to the second part here and some of the practical uses uh, with uh, uh, Apple and Microsoft where uh, we'll see the rubber uh, you know meet the road here uh, that will be on Tuesday everybody at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, this will be open to all so uh, I'll uh, put the webinar links uh, etc uh, uh, I'll create them and uh, uh, disseminate them uh, via email etc you will get the links etc for for this uh, so that you guys can uh, come to this part two of Enrico's presentation uh, let's see, lots of thank yous and uh, excellent uh, materials here uh, from uh, from users or attendees here. Uh, and then a question regarding um, the links. And I don't, I don't know how you feel about this, Enrico. Uh, the uh, people are asking for all the different links. If you uh, were willing to share your presentation or at least put maybe together a document or I can help you with that uh, on all the different links here. Uh, so that uh, yeah, people have most of them. Put in the comments on YouTube channel, uh, separate, um, uh, indicating the the number of the slides so they can uh, easily repair that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that would be that would be excellent. Uh, so uh, uh, we'll put put something together, uh, not only in the YouTube, but um, maybe we can have a separate separate document, etc uh for the email that i'll send out on uh, uh this weekend on sunday so everyone look for the email on sunday i'll send out for this a uh, second uh, presentation on uh tuesday for uh for enrico uh i think that's it uh, all these other questions here hold on a minute just a string of them coming in right now <clears throat> lots of lots of Some thank yous problem with the audio yeah everything was 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 excellent uh, and your English as well. Uh, <laughs> no, this is the painful part of the webinar. <laughs> oh well, you know, I, I I certainly do not speak perfect Italian, as you know, but uh, I I did appreciate that comment. Um, yes. So let's see here a question. Not that on... They have the same accent of Mario Draghi, but maybe Mario Draghi. <laughs> so I read the <laughs> Well. Anyway, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Tom is asking a more detailed question here. Let me just take a quick look. Um, if, I've wondered if you'd speak about the CO2 report and how it helps you trade. Yeah, Tom, he's going to get to that in part two, okay? Uh, and show these practical uses. Uh, under, under, this is where it's going to be really fascinating. I, you know, Enrico shared this with me earlier just to, to uh, get an overview of his um, presentation. Uh, he's going to show practical examples, and he's going to apply all of what we ju he just went through to a uh, bookmap order flow. So you're going to be able to see it. You're going to be able to use it. All right. Uh, like I said, I've never seen anything like this in terms of presentation, breaking it down like this. Uh, so uh, um, uh, very, very nice uh, presentation. He's done a lot of uh, work and put it together for us in a nice little package, which is it, it's hard to do. You, it's hard to find all this information together like that. All right, so I think I think that's it then, uh, Enrico. I don't think there's okay. anything else. Thank to you go, very much for attending. Um, yeah, no, well, not because we we are um, speaking um, on next Tuesday, so um, I can wish Merry Christmas next Tuesday. Excellent, excellent. We'll see everyone on Tuesday. Thank you again, Enrico. Okay, ciao. Ciao, ciao, tutti. <laughs>